Kent Wilders is a Dutch member of parliament and a leader of the Party for Freedom, the PVV. His defense of the Netherlands' ability and right to protect its culture and people from the various forms of and threats of Islam and, and jihad has come at tremendous personal cost. A staunch advocate for free speech and freedom in general, Mr. Wilders was the AFA a Heroes of Conscience honoree in 2009, and we are delighted to have him back again. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gerd Wilders. so much. Thank you, America. It's good to be back here again, and I'm really happy and honored to be here tonight among you. Thank you, American Freedom Alliance, for the invitation. And thank you all for being here tonight. It takes guts to be here. And I consider you all heroes. And I'm immensely proud of you all. The security measures tonight are impressive, but unfortunately necessary. We are living the dreadful consequences of the Islamization of America. And this is the unfortunate proof. You have been able to notice it, I am sure, in your way in. There are armed security officers everywhere and they are heroes too they are here <laughs> they are here to protect us and without them it would be unsafe and impossible for us to be here for me to speak here they are indeed our last line of defense against the consequences of Islam. Yes, it is Islam that is causing this terrible situation where ordinary citizens like you and me need police protection to safely enjoy a fundamental right which the American Founding Fathers have bestowed on us in their First Amendment. The right to free speech. The right... Yeah. The right to be informed in freedom. The right to discuss every issue in freedom, including Islam. And Ronald Reagan, the great Californian and great US president, once said, and I quote, I think it's time we ask ourselves if we still know the freedom that were intended for us by the founding fathers, end of quote. And Ronald Reagan, indeed, did everything he could to restore these freedoms. But today, 28 years after he left office, here in this room, his question looms larger than ever. And the reason is the stronghold which Islam has gained not only in Europe, but also here in America during the past three decades. Yes, my friends, listen carefully. I'm talking about Islam, not about radical Islam, not about Islamism, not about extremism. It is, it might be uncomfortable for the left or the politically correct elite, but it is Islam, pure and simple. For the truth is that Islam is not a peace-loving religion. It's an evil, totalitarian ideology. Islam hates us, an American recently said. It claims, pure and simple, that women, Jews, Christians, apostates, and non-Muslims are inferior beings. Jews are compared to apes, Christians to pigs, Women are treated like cattle. It's all in the Quran, a book worse and more anti-Semitic than Mein Kampf is. Islam, my friends, is indeed evil. Look at its so-called prophet Muhammad. 
He slaughtered Jewish tribes. He raped a young girl. He gave sex slaves as a gift to his henchmen. And he is still today an example for more than one billion Muslims worldwide. No wonder that some of his followers take to terrorism. Islam preaches hatred, propagates violence, and is barbaric and violent by nature. It wants all Muslims to submit. It is incompatible with freedom as we know it. And nothing, nothing will ever change that. That's why we should de-Islamize our societies in order to stay free nations. No appeasement, no concessions, but vigilance, perseverance, and strength against barbarism is the one thing we should do. And I hope with your support. But before I continue, allow me first to thank the heroes of the American Freedom Alliance for giving me the opportunity to talk to you to honor my good friend, David Horowitz. It is an enormous privilege for me to stand here in front of so many brave American patriots and to give this keynote speech in honor of David. Because if ever, if ever there was a true American freedom fighter deserving the Heroes of Conscience Award, then it certainly is the great David Horowitz. David is one of America's most courageous political analysts and activists, apart from being a terrific writer and the most generous of friends. It was David, indeed, who invited me here eight years ago to give my first ever speech in California. It was David, indeed, who saw the danger of Islam before almost anyone else. And it was David who decided to do something about it. And I totally agree with Norman Podhoretz, who said that David Horowitz had done, has done so much and in so many different ways that one might be justified in suspecting that he is actually more than one person. <laughs> and I would add that if he indeed turns out to be more than one person, he is probably the only man on earth who never sleeps because he is indeed forever vigilant, forever on the move, forever working, forever defending the values we all hold dear. And David also bears the name of the greatest king of Israel. And as a boy, as you know, this king beat the giant Goliath with nothing but a slingshot. And like King David, our David, David Horowitz, does not run away from dangerous threats, but he bravely fights them. And he fights to win without any fear. And his slingshot is the David Horowitz Freedom Center. David, my friends, David defends our freedom, not just in America, but everywhere in the free rest. Everybody knows David Horowitz. Because David understands that we are indeed in a global battle and that we have to act globally, now more than ever, before it's too late. David, it's an honor to be considered your friend. You are an inspiration to me personally and to many, many others all over the world. You are a true hero. Thank you so much for who you are and anything, everything you have done for freedom. Thank you so much. My friends, I will not beat around the bush. That is not my style, but <laughs> as well, indeed, we have to be frank. And we don't only need David Horowitz, we need all of you to counter the deadly challenge of Islam. Because if we fail to do our duty, freedom will be lost. And it's not 
global warming that is threatening the world. It is global Islam that is threatening the world. Islam abuses our freedoms and democratic liberties to subvert our democracy and rob us of our freedom. It built mosques and Islamic schools, often with Saudi money, where hatred against the West is preached. It abuses our legal system to harass its critics. It behaves like a fifth column in our midst. And meanwhile, the threat of Islamic violence has become omnipresent in the free world. Attack after attack, innocent people being killed. Everyone is a target today. And most political leaders and the media are still ignoring the problem. They want the citizens to believe that Islam is a religion of peace and that there are only a few Islamic extremists who are ruining everything for everyone. What a lie. I tell you, do not let yourselves be fooled anymore. Let me give you some of the facts. Opinion, opinion polls show that no less than two-thirds of the Muslims in my own country, the Netherlands, find Islamic rules more important than our secular democratic laws. And 80% of the Turkish youth in Holland, one of the most prominent um, group um, of immigrants in the Netherlands, find, do not consider it wrong to use violence to non-believers. 80% of the Turkish youth. And they also support the same 80% the armed combat of Hamas against our great ally Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East. And research for a leftist inst from a leftist institution, the University of Amsterdam, even showed that as many as 11% of the Dutch Muslims find it acceptable to use violence in the Netherlands in the name of Islam. And that is more than 100,000 million, 100,000 Muslims in the Netherlands today. Twice the number of all the soldiers in our Dutch army. But also in America, last month, the Pew Forum revealed something truly shocking. I don't know if you read it, but the world is becoming more Islamic every day. Between today and the year 2060, the number of Muslims will grow 70%. By 2060, Islam will have almost as many followers as Christianity, and soon after, it is bound to become the largest belief system on earth. And of course, I know there are many moderate Muslims, but the not moderate Islam, my friends, is non-existent. And because there is no moderate Islam, the more Islam we allow and we import in our country, the more violence, hatred, and intolerance we are bringing in. So it's time to finally say, stop. Enough is enough. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. Enough is enough. We have more than enough in our Western world of Islam. And those who saw Islam must realize that they will only harvest nothing but the terrible barbarism of Sharia law, with its oppression of women, Christians, Jews, death sentences for apostates and Islam critics and other atrocities on our own national soil. Islam, my friends, uses all the tools it can lay its hands on. Guns, bombs, knives, cars, planes, but also immigration and demography. It is time to realize that. If we do not wake up soon and adopt policies of courage and conscience rather than of fear, our population will be replaced. Remember that word, replaced. We will be replaced. And in many Western European countries, 
the population is only growing today because of immigrants from non-Western countries. We are in Europe being replaced as we speak. Mohammed, today, listen carefully. Mohammed today is already the most popular name among newborn boys in all the major British, French, Belgian, Dutch, and Norwegian cities. The most popular name. Do you want that to happen here? No. Many Western European neighborhoods have come to resemble Northern Africa of the Middle East. And I implore you, do not let it happen here. What is happening in Europe will happen to America as well, if you don't act. And of course, as I said, there is the omnipresent threat of terror. From Brussels to Paris, from London to Nice, and also here in America. Last year, Europe experienced what we call a black summer, with terror attacks almost every week, sometimes in Germany twice a day. And it did not stop afterwards. We all remember the Berlin Christmas market massacre, Stockholm, and all the other murderous attacks, all done in the name of Allah, by a terrorist shouting Allah who Akbar. And it is time, my friends, to expose all those cowards who are selling us out. And those are most of the political leaders in the West. And we should perhaps, instead of this beautiful reward, also introduce an annual award of shame. Give it. <laughs> Give the prize to the Western politician who has behaved that year as what Vladimir Lenin would have called the most useful idiot, or in this case, the most useful infidel. Of course, I would give it to my own Prime Minister Rutte immediately if you would allow me to do so. Not only because he is a puppy dog to the German Chancellor Merkel, who opened the door, as you know, for thousands, for millions, of people who are so-called refugees, which were almost all young men in their 30s without the families, not looking for a refugee, because if they would have sought only the refugee status, they would have stopped after Syria at the first safe country in Europe, which they didn't do. They traveled through Greece to, to, to former Yugoslavia, through Austria, to come to Germany and Holland. They came not for security, they came for a welfare state thanks to Mrs. Merkel. Yeah. Strange things are happening today. Just a week ago, to give you an example of the Netherlands, it was revealed that the careless Dutch authorities allowed a convicted terrorist and ISIS terrorist sympathizer to work and to take pictures at the Dutch NATO Air Force, ba Air Force Base in Volkel where American nuclear weapons are said to be stored. He was just hired and made pictures of the compound. It was also revealed that the Dutch police pressured the major Dutch newspaper not to publish crime figures among asylum seekers. They do not want the people to know what the reality is. And meanwhile, last week in Amsterdam, our capital, the authorities want to add Islamic headscarves to the police uniform. Can you imagine Amsterdam last week? And in The Hague, another example for just a few days ago, Islamic parents took a school to court and demanded 10,000 euros in damages because the class picture has been taken on a day when their child was, by the way, illegally absent from school because the parents had taken it to an Islamic feast. Now, what do you think that the judge in Holland said? She ruled that the school had been wrong and discriminated against Muslims. Oh. Meanwhile, our Prime Minister, Mr. Rutte, refuses to form a government coalition with my party, the Party for Freedom. Although our two parties are the biggest party in the country and we could easily form a government in a week time. But Mr. Rutte, as most of the elites in Western Europe, objects to our views on Islam, refuses to see Islam 
as a danger. He rather prefers to govern with parties from the left. Can you imagine? We invited the Socialist Party. He invited the Social Democratic Party. And he prefers to govern with parties from the left who pamper Islam, who are cultural relativists by nature, and who wants to open our borders even more. And with such elitists, like our own Prime Minister, Mr. Rutte, but also Angela Merkel, or the new French President, Emmanuel Macron, Europe is rapidly becoming Eurabia. We urgently need Churchills in Europe, and we only get Chamberlains, unfortunately. My friends, as I said, we are facing a demographic and an immigration drama. Last year, over 180,000 people crossed in shabby boats from Libya to Europe. And it's just the beginning. If you think about what is coming from Libya today, if you imagine what happened with the so-called Syrian refugees, you haven't seen anything yet. The United Nations expect the populations of Africa to quadruple by the end of this century. From one billion people in Africa today to four billion people in Africa at the end of the century. And one third of the African people even today say they want to leave their country and many of them who are Islamic tell them that they want to come to Europe to move north. And with Western Europeans' present open door policy, with the weak and cowardly leaders that we have, the population of my country is in real danger once again, remind of the word replaced. We are indeed being replaced. We are being colonized, replaced and colonized, and we let it happen. We are Islamized, replaced, colonized, and Islamized now and even more in the decades to come. And that is, of course, that we cannot have the explosion of the demography in Africa, which will lead to the end of our existence and the culture that we face today. That is why I call it that what we are facing today in Europe is an existential problem. It's not a problem of economics that you can, can counter with smaller government and lower taxes. This is an existential problem. If we don't act soon, we, and I'm not exaggerating, we cease to exist. And please look at Europe and make sure it will not happen in your own beautiful America. My friends. I have to tell you the bad news, but luckily there's not only bad news in Europe. Here is the good news. Today, ever more people in my continent, Europe, are realizing that we need a politics of courage rather than a politics of fear. And we can see the great Western awakening all around us. Look at the recent elections in the Netherlands. The media, the leftist media, tried to spin it as if my party, the Party for Freedom, lost the elections, but in fact we won. More than 33% more seats in the lower house of parliament we gained. And in a constitutional system, <clears throat> in a constitutional multi-party system, where today we have 13 political parties in the Dutch parliament, we became the second biggest party, which is a huge success yeah. for a party that only exists for 10 years. And I guarantee you, next time we will be number one. Because, because people are sick and tired of the political cowards who are in charge today, and not just in the Netherlands. Look at the success of Marine Le Pen in France, making it to the second round, getting more than 11 million votes, drawing the support of a third of the French voters. Indeed, she did not win. She became second, but she is stronger than ever. And I guarantee you, 
like myself, next time Marine Le Pen will win. And, and in Austria, a patriot was almost elected as president. He lost, I believe, by two or three percent of the vote. And only the combined effort of all the other parties and the leftist establishment, including the churches, you were able to prevent this. And once again, next time, I am sure they will win. And you see the same in Sweden, in Germany, and many other countries in Europe, that similar parties like mine are steadily gaining ground. Of course, of course, the more successful we become, the more angered and violent Islam will react, and the more the political correct elites will hate us and attempt to silence us. And I know it better than anyone else, because as you know, Islam has marked me for death for speaking out against Islam, for fighting for liberty and freedom. I am indeed, just for doing that, on the death list of Al-Qaeda, of the Islamic State, of the Pakistani Taliban and all the other kind of thugs. Since 2004, for almost 13 years already, I have been living an around-the-clock police protection. And wherever I go, heavily armed bodyguards accompany me, losing my own freedom in the process of defending freedom. But one thing, unfortunately, has changed in these 13 years. Today, we are all on the death list, not just me. We are all in the same boat today. I hope you realize what I'm saying here. And Islam should not be effective in silencing us, in making us fear them. The politically correct elites should not have that same effect on us either. They also try to rob us of our free speech. They try to do it with me by taking me to court, as they did six years ago when I made this documentary called Fitna about the Quran and Islam and the Islamization of my country. After a huge process that took years, a lot of time, money and energy, I was luckily acquitted on all charges. So they tried again. So the elite tried again. Two years ago, the Dutch authorities charged me. As a matter of fact, they have to say 5,000 Muslims charged me, went to the police to complain about me when I have spoken out about Moroccans in the Netherlands. The group that is the most overrepresented in crime of all the Dutch jihadis who go and fight in Syria, almost 80% of them are all Dutch Moroccans. And it was a political trial, a sham, a charade, and the court used a, le used a legal trick to convict me this time. I still have to appeal, but they did. It declared, and that was the trick, nationality a race. Today, nationality in the Netherlands is considered a race. It's a crime if you, for instance, would say in Holland today that you don't want to allow more Mexicans into your country. It's discrimination. You are not allowed to do so. But I have good news for them. Whatever they do, whatever the terrorists do, whatever the political elite do, whatever the courts will do, I will never, ever be silenced. Thank you. Thank you. I will continue to speak out against Islam. I will continue to fight for our freedom. I will continue to propose legislation in the Dutch Parliament to de-Islamize our country, to close its borders, to protect my people, to fight for our Western civilization in my own country and everywhere in the world. Because we must defend civilization in all our Western societies. We must stand, my friends, we must stand with every nation and every people threatened by Islam, especially with the country that I love so much and that I lived 
for a few years when I was a young man, and the country that is fighting our fight today, the state of Israel. Israel is a beacon of light in a sea of Islamic darkness. It's the only democracy in the Middle East and the only country in the region that shares our values. Israel is one of us. And mothers of sons in Europe can have a good night's sleep because the mothers in Israel lay awake every night about the health of their sons in the army fighting our fight. Islam's conflict with Islam, Israel's conflict with Islam, indeed, is our conflict as well. And it's not a conflict about land. It's a conflict about the ideology, the Islamic ideology and our freedom. And therefore, territorial concessions by Israel are totally useless and they should never go into that. But Israel also learned us an important lesson. The Israelis have experienced during the almost seven decades of conflict with Islamic countries that Islam sees concessions as weakness. Concessions are seen as weakness. The same goes for consensus, concessions to Islamic countries, such as, for instance, the Islamic Republic of Iran, but also the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the exporter of Wahhabism and terrorism today. We must deal with Islam from a position of strength. We must be tough and unwavering. We must never give in and let no provocation be unanswered. Because once again, to compromise and to deal with Islam or Islamic nations is seen as weakness. My friends, I'm summoning up. This is, according to me, what we should do. First, we should de-Islamize. Very politically incorrect, but I believe we should de-Islamize our countries. I don't, want, I don't want no more Islamic schools in our society. Not one. If you, want, if you want young Islamic children to assimilate, to get a job, to have a good life in your country, you cannot allow them to get educated by Sharia law in our country. So shut down all Islamic schools. I don't want no more mosques in our countries as well. And my friend, my friends, a very important point as well is that we must not, must not let Islam abuse our freedom in order to rob, of, rob us of it. The war of Islam is a war between good and evil. I agree with that. But that can only be successful if we recognize that Islam is the evil itself. It's the only way. B, we should end all immigration from Islamic countries. <laughs> enough is enough. Not that all Islamic immigrants are criminal people. I'm not suggesting that. It would be crazy to suggest. But they are bringing along a culture, an Islamic culture, that, as the word Islam means, want to submit us and it's impossible to assimilate. So we should stop all immigration from Islamic countries. And for the people, and for the people, the Islamic people who are already in our society, like the one million Muslims that are already in Holland today, I have a very clear message. If you adhere to our values, if you adhere to our constitution, if you adhere to our secular laws, you are not only welcome to stay, but you are equal as anybody else. But if you cross the red line, if you start acting like Sharia law, if you treat Christians, apostates, or any non-Muslims in a different uh, way that is not according to our Constitution and our law, we will pick you up, rip you off the Dutch nationality, and send you packing the day immediately. No 
concessions anymore. C, we should regain national sovereignty and reinstate national border control. For you, it's like something normal, but for us, the Netherlands, as a member of the European Union, where we transferred our sovereign rights of border control, we have to leave Brussels, we have to leave the European Union in order to once again become a country that is sovereign. And I want the Dutch to follow the British with a Brexit. And then D, we should defend more and be proud of it, not ashamed, but be proud of it, defend the Judeo-Christian roots of our civilization. It's very important. The biggest, the biggest disease we faced in the past decades is called cultural relativism by politi politicians and others who believed and fooled the people by saying that all cultures are equal. Well, they are not. Our culture, based on Judaism and Christianity, is far better, far better and superior, and let's be proud of saying that, than the Islamic culture. Yeah. Far better. <laughs> let, us, let us not be afraid. Let us not be ashamed. Let us be proud on our identity. Let us be proud on who we are and what we are. And by the way, Huntington was wrong. It's not even a clash of civilization. It's a clash between a civilization and barbarity. And we are winning. It. And maybe last but not least, get rid of the political correctness. The biggest disease that we face. We have to do what is urgently needed. We should not let Islam use our freedoms and our constitutional rights just to abolish them for us. Because this is what is happening. Why do we grant all constitutional rights to an organization, to a, to a, to a, to a people, or even more important, to um, the Islamic um, ideology, to a totalitarian ideology that if they would get their way, as they have proven to all the Islamic countries, all the countries in the world where Islam is already dominant today, that they will only finish our constitution. Right. Think about that. Yeah. Should we grant all constitutional rights to an ideology that wants to rob us of the constitutional rights? I think it deserves a discussion. I think we should stop being naive. We should stop being weak. We should realize that war has been declared on us. War has been declared on us. And we are not fighting back, and we should start fighting back. My friends, we are living in troubled times, and the threats are huge. But we know that if we do our duty, as we all should, then we will win. And I'm sure we can win. And we know we can win. Just look at David Horowitz that we all honored today. David is disliked by the leftish elites in Washington, but they cannot stop him. We have just seen how influential David is. And despite a total blackout in the fake news media, his recent book, Big Agenda, has been on the New York Times bestseller list for four months now. Allow me to finish by quoting Ronald Reagan again. Ronald Reagan, the great president, said, let us renew our determination, our courage, our strength. And those who say that we are in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look, end of quote. And I say, look at David. Follow his example of courage. And indeed, my friend, there is no greater way to honor David Horowitz than to follow in his footsteps and join the army of freedom. Enough. Enough of Islam. Enough of the leftish political correctness. Enough of all the cowards that tend to rule us. 
Let us stand together and never give up. Let us bravely move forward because we will never, never, ever give up our freedom. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.